Welcome to the Hallelujah House, a home for Christian creatives. It's in the living room where you can get comfortable and listen in as childhood friends Liz Hammond and Tammy Carter Adams discuss the latest faith-based podcast. So grab a cup of coffee, get comfortable, kick off your shoes, and get ready to join in on the conversation. Welcome to the living room. This is Tammy Carter Adams, and I hope you'll forgive my scratchy throat today, but I'm sitting here with my hot tea, and I'm going to move forward on this no matter what I feel like, and we're going get, to um, get to talk about today the promise of the abundant life. I love talking about the abundant life. There's, it is a subject that God has really put on my heart, and um, and whenever I teach abiding, I always, we always discuss the abundant life and how we start off the study is we make a list of the things our hearts desires and what we want. And we say, you know, I I remind them that nothing is, nothing is too big for the Lord. So write it all out. And by the end of the study, I tell them now, if you go back to your list, well, now that you're having a relationship with the Lord and you're having your quiet time and you're learning how to abide, has anything on that list changed? So I want to discuss the world's view of an abundant life versus the biblical view of an abundant life. And it's they're, they're very, very different. Okay. So I want to take four P's in describing what God's view of an abundant life is. And these P's are, we're going to discuss the promise of an abundant life, the power of an abundant life, the purpose of abundant life, and the picture. What it, What's it going to look like for someone who's living an abundant life in, in Christ Jesus? And some of these are going to, inter- and they're kind of going to lap over each other. And that'll be all right. We're just going to move forward with that. But I wanted to explain the P's for a worldly view of an abundant life. Actually, let's let's go ahead and go to the Father in prayer, shall we? It's important to pray before we get started in this. I have to remind myself of that. Father God, I just thank you so much for this word you've given me to share. I get so excited. I want to I want to jump into it and I just want to invite you in our presence. I want you to speak Lord, and, and, and let it be your words, not my own, Lord. Help me to deliver the message clearly and help it to be received as well. I pray for those listening, that your blessings on their life. I pray that they're feeling anxiety, that they will turn to you. And I pray for them to live in the abundance that you've promised, Lord. I love you. Love you, love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. The P's of a worldly idea of an abundant life are pleasure, party, and prosperity. Pleasure, party, prosperity. I see the world today. I see the church falling prey into into some of these ideas. There's a lot of prosperity preachers and teachers and a whole bunch of mess out there. And I think that um, we got to be very careful about what we're listening to and what we're filling our minds with that that we're sticking with truth. Um, I am a, I am a truth seeker. I honestly, when something don't seem right, I will go to the word and I'll dive into it. And I think all of us really should be that way. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. Trust me. I have believed some of these lies in my life. I have, I have, and, and it has been apparent in my life, but as I've had my quiet time and I've begun abiding in Jesus, God will take that word. And it, as it says, it's the living, breathing word of God. It's a miraculous book. He takes the word and he like dissects some of the things that I've been led to believe by the world. And he cuts, he kind of cuts it out of me and, and, and makes me see the truth within those pages. That's why it's so important to get in the word, get in the word every day if you can. Okay, so let's start. Um, there, there are. Um, let's start with the promise of abundance. Okay. Now this has been a big subject, so I just just stick with me here because I'm feeling a little discombobulated today. I've had kind of a 
a rough week, and we might get into that in this teaching, but I want you to stay with me and listen to what the Father has for you today, okay? The promise of abundance. Here it is. This is where it comes from, John 10, 10 and 11. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. I want you to look at the word life here. I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So this is Jesus speaking. Let's let's remember this is Jesus Christ. He's speaking um, to his followers. And he's promising us that he came so that we may have this abundant life. Now the word life here, there are three. I went back to the original Greek translation of the word life. And there are three in Greek, okay? Three words that our life in Greek, in the, in the Greek translation. And I'm going to go over those. Bios, B-I-O-S, is the physical life. Suka is P-S-U-C-H-E, is the soul life. And Zoe, Z-O-E, is the eternal divine life of God. In this verse, he's talking about Zoe, the eternal divine life of God. That's what the the abundant, that's what you're going to have access to abundantly. You're going to have access to the Father. That's what it's talking about. It's not talking about, you know, you're going to be able to pluck money off your tree in the backyard. It's not talking about, you know, party all the time in the freedom. That is not what this is about. This is about you're going to have the Holy Spirit indwell in you when you believe that Jesus died and was resurrected. And you tell him that and tell him, I believe. We talked about this in the last couple of podcasts. Then the Holy Spirit indwells in you so that you have access to the Father and you can understand that when the Father speaks to you, the Holy Spirit is a trans, is basically your internal translator who can tell you, can put it in a language you understand so you can understand your Father's instructions to you. And it's through Jesus Christ we have access to the Father. That's why I think of the, the triangle trinity. Jesus died on the cross. He became the perfect punishment, perfect lamb, took on the punishment of our sins. He, he shed his blood on that cross and rose again and overcame death so that one day, you believe in him and you've accepted him as your personal savior and he come, and the holy spirit comes in and dwells in your in, inside of you that one day you're going to overcome death as well because he will become your eternal life this is what it's talking about this is the abundant life okay so i want to nail this down okay now the world will tell you that in this verse lots of prosperity preachers preach this verse and they refer to bios the physical life the greek translation the the greek word for life bios which means physical life they're gonna they're gonna tell you that you're gonna have an abundant life full of prosperity your talents will overflow your your money's going to overflow. Your relationships are going to have you have great relationships. All of these things. Your career is going to take off. You're going to have this great breakthrough. Okay? But, and let me just say here, God may have you in that position, but it's not for you. Okay? And we're going to get to that in a minute. But what he's saying here, this is not your physical life. This is you're going to have an overflowing of the Holy Spirit indwelling in you, that you are going to have more of Jesus, okay? You're going to have access to the Father through Jesus Christ by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's move on. I want to read this verse to you. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes into the Father but by me. Now, what do you think the word life here means? Jesus is the way. He is the way to have an eternal life, okay? He's the way to the Father. He is the truth. Jesus, we know Jesus is the word, as in John 1, 1 states. Jesus is the word. 
and the word became flesh, right? Jesus is the word. He is the one that spoke, spoke creation. He spoke life into us. He, every word that came out of his mouth. And let me say, just because you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit doesn't mean you can speak life into things. I don't believe that whatsoever. I believe you can pray to the Father and he does it, not you. Okay. All right, so I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes into the Father but by me. John 14, 6. The life here, if you go back to the original Greek translation, is also Zoe, the eternal life. Okay? So when we're, so it's the same. So this tells you Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. You're going to have access to the Father through Jesus. Okay, so I want to talk about the power of the abundance. The power of this is you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, right? And because the Spirit lives in you, He's going to go to work on you, girl and boys, sisters and brothers. I'm sorry I say girl first because I'm used to having only a woman audience. I'm used to teaching women. So I got to remember there could be men out there listening. He's going to go to work on you, sister and brothers. He is going to, he is going to start a process called sanctification. He's going to start cutting away all the things that are not of him. You know, the, the selfishness, the insecurities, all of these things, as you're growing in relationship with the Lord, it does not happen overnight. It is a lifetime process. And let me say, you will not be perfect at your death. You won't be. You're not. He's just going to, you're going to be becoming more like Jesus's character, but you will never become Jesus. He's only, he's the only perfect one. Okay. So when he's cutting and, 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 um, and you're leaning into the Father, and He's cutting away these things, then He's going to fill you with those empty spaces with Himself, the fruit of the Spirit. That's what's going to happen. It's going to, you're going to be having all, the joy will come, the peace will come, the long suffering, the gentleness. Okay, so all of these things are going to fill up inside of you. Okay, and that is going to, that's going to be as selfishness, as all the impatience, as all the, the brutal um, honesty you've been given people, you know, the meanness starts, starts moving away. All of these things, the fruits of the spirit will start coming into play in your life. Okay, I think of it like this. As you know, God says that um, I am vine, you are the branch and God is the one that comes through. He's the gardener. He comes through and he cuts, okay? And we attach ourselves to Jesus, all right? So think of a fruit tree. I notice, I, I mean, I have a great fruit tree in my garden that I've planted um, in memorial to my sister when she passed away, okay? Now, I notice if, if I don't trim that tree when I'm supposed to, I don't have a good harvest of fruit, Okay? And if it, and because it's in a shady part of my garden, which my husband told me not to plant it there, and I did anyway, um, there is not, I, I, I don't have a, a big harvest of grapefruit on this tree every, every, every winter, to be honest, okay? Because it's not in the light, and I forget to, to trim it back, okay? So God takes these things away from us because he wants to make us um, have more fruit, we're, we're, we're feeding people more. We're pouring out. Okay. That leads us into the purpose of this abundance. Okay. What is the purpose of this abundance? The worldview and the purpose of the abundance is God wants me to be happy. He wants me to enjoy my life, right? Okay. There's no place in the word that says God wants you to be happy. I'm just going to put it out there because happy is based on your happenings. It's very short-lived. It is, um, you know, I want to buy that new car and drive it around because it's going to make me happy. And what happens when you get the door ding? <laughs> your happiness is gone because it's not perfect anymore, right? Okay, that is um, a worldview. The truth is this abundance that is being poured into you 
will be poured out unto others in order to give God the glory. And God's glory, as we discussed before, is not like a trophy like we think of um, glorifying man. God's glory is like his, is that his power um, and fruit and the, and the, and the love is being witnessed through us by other people. And we're revealing who God is through our lives. That's God's glory. It is something he uses, utilizes to reach people for him. And I love that. Okay. So it's just like what we talked about in our previous podcast, The Living Water. If you have not gone through those, I encourage you to do so because God, you know, Christ tells the woman at the well, he's going to fill her with the living water so that it'll become like a spring and it'll pour out onto other people. And that's exactly what this is about. The abundant life is you're going to have this fruit. You're going to feel joy in the midst of a painful season. All right. Now I'm going to tell you something about my week. I found out recently that through an MRI that for the last five years that I have implants in me that are silicone, which I was adamant about requesting saline. I wanted saline. We had an agreement with the plastic surgeon that she was going to give me saline implants and I ended up with silicone. And this is deeply personal, so I'm sharing this to you because I want to, it fits into what I'm trying to talk about here. And I just feel impressed on the Lord to share this. So, you know, when I first found out I was mad, you know, I get mad, you know, and I requested, I I requested my medical records to be sent to me, a big block of medical records to be sent to my house. And I went through them with a fine tooth comb because I wanted to nab this doctor. I wanted to nab her. I wanted to find that place where I had signed a contract stating that I was getting saline and I got silicone because the last five years, what I haven't told you is I have had joint pains. My hair has fallen out. I got diagnosed with hypothyroidism, thyroidism, been on medication for that. I, I had a doctor who was testing me for RA to see if I have RA because they couldn't understand what's going on with my soft tissue. I suffered two years from a herniated disc. I've torn another tendon in my left shoulder. Um, So all these things, all my systems are going haywire. Uh, My eyes, I wake up every morning, they're dry and gunky and, and it's just been, you know, hard. I, and I kept telling my husband, I think these things are making me sick. I really think I'm sick. And And I, but then I kept brushing aside and going, no, no, it's probably just my age or whatever. But I noticed a significant difference in the way I felt after my implant surgery versus before. So that's why I was angry because I feel robbed, you know? So I went to meet with my cancer doctor yesterday and went in and I just told them I want to discuss my MRI results and I brought my little disc in and everything. And she said, um, and I told her, I said, what I'm trying to understand is why I have silicone implants in me. And she just seemed very surprised because she was not the plastic surgeon. Now she was the the doctor that removed, um, the cancerous tissue. And then behind her comes the, the plastic surgeon who puts in the implants. I had it all done at once. So they were in the room together. Um, and she was very sorry. I mean, very sorry. And, um, and I've told her all of my symptoms and she affirmed my symptoms and stated that, you know, that she's had several patients have the same issues and that when they removed them, they felt fine afterward that, you know, some of them went flat. And so I have a big decision to make in my, regarding my health, but this is, um, this is where God got me in that waiting room yesterday. I mean, in the, in her, in my, um, with my meeting with her, she asked me the question, would you like for me to call your plastic surgeon? And let me tell you something. My flesh wanted to say, no, I want to blindside this woman. I want to sock it to her without her, um, having any, um, you know, knowledge that I was coming, you know, that was my flesh. But 
you know, I, I have the Holy Spirit in me and I felt strongly that the Holy Spirit was saying, Tammy, you know, I have a purpose in this, even this, there is a purpose in this and you're not going to blindside her. And so I, you know, I said, no, I don't want to blind. And I told the doctor, no, you go ahead, call her, talk to her. Yeah, that's probably for the best. I don't want to blindside her. But in my flesh, my mind was telling me, blindside her, blindside her. How many of you have experienced the same thing that you just want to sock it to them? You know, I know you can relate with this because I know there are some punchers out there like me. But my nickname, if it tells you anything by my brother-in-laws is they call me Little C for Little Cobra. So that tells you something a little bit about my personality. Um, But getting back to this. But when we have the Holy Spirit, you know, we have to, we, we are ambassadors of Christ. And when I was in that room, I knew God was telling me, you are an ambassador of me, you know, act accordingly, right? So that's what the abundance is. The abundance is God's going to speak to you in those types of situations. And he's going to speak, you know, hopefully louder than your flesh. We're not going to, we're going to screw up, honestly, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. There are times that I didn't listen to the Holy Spirit and I instantly regretted it. I mean, there have been, there was a consequence I had to suffer for that. But yesterday I knew I'm like, because she appeared as if I was, this has not happened before. So I'm thinking in my head, this has got to be God orchestrated. You know, God's got a plan for this. Because remember last podcast when I shared my cancer story, if you haven't heard that, listen to it. I discussed that Romans verse where all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose, right? So I have to keep reminding myself these last five years, there is a purpose in this. And I don't know who he wants to reach with this, but you know what? you know, pout more power to the Lord. I want him to reach whoever he can for me, um, through, through me. I'm willing. And, um, because, you know, I want my life to have eternal consequences. That's the abundant life. And, and it goes on eternally. Okay. So when you're going through a difficult season, as I am, you still have joy. I still have joy. You know, I've been cracking jokes about going flat. You know, it's a serious, but it is a serious thing. I, and I'm not going to say this is an easy decision for me. Um, I have been sad. I have cried. I have thought it's not fair again. You know, con- you know, you have all those thoughts and, you know, you know, worry for my husband. That he's not going to find me attractive. Of course, you know, who, who wouldn't think that, but you know, God Um, in these, in these difficult times, if I could say this, I feel God's presence more and I feel his abundance, the abundance of his presence. Okay. He's walking with me through this because he's leaning in real close and I'm feeling it and, and um, he, uh, and he's speaking to me through this. Okay. And I want you to have that too, if you don't. And it no way means say that I have more Holy Spirit than anybody else. If you're a believer and and I'm not saying that I'm saying that when we go through these difficult times, it's almost as if God makes us feel his presence more, right? Okay. So we've gone over the promise, the promise of the abundant life. We've gone over the power of the abundant life. And that was the purpose of the abundant life. Now we're going to talk about what is abundant life, what is a picture of an abundant life. And it's kind of what we've already discussed. I'm just going to give you some of the picture. And you may know people in your life that have this, that seem to be walking in his abundance. It's someone who believes in God's promises. Okay, they believe, they believe God's promise. And there are many promises in God's word to you. Did you know that God promises provisions? He might not promise you prosperity, but he does promise you provisions. Another P word. Okay, it's um, 
Another picture is they utilize their gifts, money, and talents for God's glory. God also states in his word that the more that you're given, the more is going to be expected of you. So some of us may be wealthy. We're all wealthy if we live in the United States compared to those that live outside, you know. But when we're giving a lot of money, we're expected to give a lot of money. When we're giving a, given a lot of talent in something, we're expected to use our talents for the glory of God. And that doesn't mean that every painting needs to have a Jesus in it. I think there's a misconception there. But we're not using our canvases, coating our canvases with something that looks dark and demonic and, and um, you know, as if we're we're not representing the Lord on our canvas, but you know, we can, we got landscapes and, you know, um, you know, portraits and there's so it can be even be modern art, you know, modern art can be greatly used for the glory of God. Um, we're not going to dip our, dip our paintbrush in vulgarity, right? If we're a believer and we're trying to use our art for the, for the glory of the Lord. Um, but what we can do and how, how can modern art be used for the glory of the Lord. Get it in, you know, God could use it to, to create a pathway for you to get into galleries and to get into shows. And there they see you, they hear the meaning behind your painting, or they hear you speak and they notice something different about you. And you can share the message of the gospel through your platform. It doesn't have to be through that canvas, but God will use whatever you give him. Okay. People, another picture is that pe- those that are walking in, in the abundant life, they're walking by faith, not by sight. They don't seem to see the troubles befalling them. They're, they're having faith that if God allowed this in my life, and it is, everything that happens to a believer falls to the fingers of God, right? Like sand slipping through his fingers. He has filtered it through his hands that this is going to be utilized for his purposes. And so they're walking by faith, not by sight. They're not, they're not looking around at all the destruction happening around them, that they are, they are hanging to God's promise that this will be used for his glory and have faith that God is going to bring me through this, whether it, even if it means taking my life as my sister's life was taken and she knew it and she still clung to God during all the way to the end, right? You're going to be, another thing is you'll be filled with peace and joy. Okay. You'll have peace about every situation and still have joy. People will see joy in you. The difference between joy and happiness, I think I've already covered happy. Happiness is, you know, based on your happenings, joy is an, an, an internal feeling. Um, I think it's of hope. You know, that in, in you, not only hope, but that you're still showing love towards other people, even when you're having a difficult time, you're not dwelled on your difficult time, that you're still looking outward on who God wants you to um, touch, you know? Okay, and there flow and then another thing is their flow out onto others this love joy peace long suffering it all flows out onto others the living water remember they live in the freedom of Christ not by legalism we can get trapped in following some rules and say you know and start you know that that is self focus honestly when we say oh you know i'm doing this i'm a good christian cuz i'm doing this you you're not focused on the lord you're focused on yourself you know, when we're walking in the spirit and not in our flesh, we're, you know, we're constantly have our spiritual eyes on looking in our material world as to what God is telling us to do. And we're taking the path that God is telling us to take. And another thing is, those that are walking in their abundance, they don't utilize grace as their excuse to sin. Paul says, God forbid that you, that you fall into sin because of your great, the grace that God has given you. So you, you know, the pendulum swings both ways. You can become so legalistic and rule focused that you're, that 
you're just, you know, become this judgmental Christian that looks down on everybody because you're the rule follower and you're the good Christian and they're all the bad. Or you can fall into into the sin of being taken advantage of your grace and drunkenness and uh, sinning and, you know, and um, thinking, well, I'm under grace, so I'm good. I'm covered. You know, God forbid, you know, your your salvation came at a great, great cost. And I think it's important for all of us to remember that. There are times that I've fallen in both camps, both camps, uh, to be honest. And I'm trying to be honest all the time with you when I'm on this podcast, because I think sometimes people look at people like me who are on the podcast that we must be, you know, perfect examples of who a Christian should be. No, we're not. <laughs> the reason why I'm on the podcast is because God has brought me through a lot of sin and a lot of hard knock places that, you know, that I have learned and I am able to um, warn, you know, you of this is where you don't want to be and, and point, pointing you in the right direction. So don't um, start thinking highly of me. I am not, I am just giving you the message that God has, uh, that has put on my heart and God has allowed me to experience some of this so I can speak into it. Okay. I wanted to share a story. Um, there was, and I want to talk about this where, you know, God lights a path, right? You're living in the, in the abundance of, of, of his abundance that he is going to give you a path, a, a lit path for you to, to follow. Right. And, um, there was a woman that I met, um, I met her, I, I noticed her on, on our app, on our next door app. And I noticed one year she was feeding people, you know, on things, come by my house Thanksgiving. If you don't have any place to eat, you know, I thought, Oh, what a wonderful person this woman is. And I noticed her name and noted it mentally. And, you know, fast forward years later, I, um, I see that she is um, asking for to borrow somebody's, you know, toaster oven so that she can make some dinner for her kids in their hotel efficiency. Okay. Um, and I felt God impressing on me, pay attention to this woman, pay attention to her, her name. And so I looked at her name again and I said, well, God, and I pray, God, why does that name seem so familiar to me? And I realized that when my son was leaving for college, I, I was underwater on creating content and getting him packed up to get in the college. And my laundry was overflowing. And a friend of mine suggested that I download the app Sudsy on my phone. And there's a Sudsy, there's a laundry um, service that comes out. They grab your laundry off your porch. They go wash it, fold it, bring it back to you. And it was relatively cheap. And it was very worth the money that I was going to pay because I was in in desperate situation at that point. So anyway, um, I came into another time where I said, "Well, you know what? I can use Sudsy. I don't. I don't. I haven't used them very often. Maybe three times, but I did the app, and I saw this woman's name come up, and I was like, "Lord, what is it that?" you want me to know about this woman. And, and so Thanksgiving, that Thanksgiving, um, that's the backstory. Now, um, Thanksgiving, I reach out to her and I said, I know that you were feeding people and, and, um, and I'm really feeling for you. Did you get a toaster, you know, did you get a rotisserie oven or whatever from anybody? Did anybody let you borrow theirs? And she says, no. And I said, well, do you have any food for your kids tonight? And she said, no. And so I sent her, um, I sent her like an Uber eat, you know, gift card. I think the only place that was open at that point, because it was very late, you know, she fed her kids very late that night, um, was like a waffle house or something like that. So she got her kids fed and everything. And I thought, you know, I'm done, you know, um, but God kept putting this woman on my heart, kept putting her on my heart. So, um, I reached out to her again and I said, I don't know what it is about this woman you want me to do, Lord, but I'm just going to invite her to lunch. And, you know, so she comes to lunch. She has her um, her hair, you know, her head wrapped in one of those scarves, and 
she um t-shirt and um she comes in we have this lunch and she's telling me this amazing story of all she had been through like you know caring for her dying uncle and her efficient co tell and he's an alcoholic and she she used to work um, work at a place where she fed people. I'm not going to mention specifics here because I want to protect this woman's identity as much as I can. But basically what happened was her house burned down. She um, ended up losing her job as COVID hit because she had to stay home and homeschool her daughter. And it was just a slew of things that happened that created this perfect storm for her to be in desperate situation. So... You know, I said, look, we adopt a family every Christmas, as most of you do. You know, you pick an angel off the tree or, you know, you pour into a family at Christmas time. I said, um, I'd like to, you know, do your, you know, you're going to be my family this Christmas. So she says to me this, she says, I just don't know what she tears up, says, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to thank you. And I said, look, don't, you know, honestly, this is nothing, honestly, you know, so don't go thinking you know, that you need to thank me for anything. You need to thank God because I'm going to be honest with you. God put you on my heart and he would not let it go. And so I knew I was supposed to invite you to lunch. Christmas is around the corner and I want to help you, you you know, get food and get your kids something and, and I'll, and, and bless you because this is what God has told me to do. Now I was walking in the abundance, right? Pouring out into somebody else. That's an example. So I tell her, you know how, and then I thought, you know, God impressed on my heart to tell her this. You know how you can thank me? I said, you can thank me by reading, getting in the word. I want you to read your Bible, and I want you to pray and thank God. And I want you to go to church. Just go to church, you know, any church. Just go to, you know, find you a church, a good church, and go. And um, so she said, okay. So we walking out to the parking lot, and she's still saying, I don't know how to thank you, I said. And I look back, and I said, remember, go to church. Because I knew this woman needed a support system. So she tells me this. She says, you know what? It's so strange, Miss Tammy. She called me Miss Tammy, even though I asked her not to. It's so, tr- it's so strange, Miss Tammy. You're the third person that's told me go to church. She goes, I got in an Uber car the other day. And the Uber driver turned around and said, hey, do you go to church? And I told her, no. And she says, well, God just told me to tell you to go to church. You need to go to church. And then somebody else, some other stranger told her to go to church. And she said, you know, it's coming from people that, you know, wouldn't normally care for me or or in unexpected places, I guess she said. I I don't want to put words in her mouth, but I think it was something like that. So I said, well, I said, you know who it's coming from? It's not coming from the women. It's coming from God. God is telling you something. So um, we st- we say our goodbyes. I start walking across the parking lot, and she yells, so excited, Miss Tammy, I'm going to church. I'm going to church. And I said, that's good. That's good. Go to church, you know. And I'm laughing and get in the car and drive away. So met up with her. You know, she came to my house at a certain time. I had the, you know, stuff for Christmas, gave it to her, moving on. And then there were several other hiccups in her life that we helped out with. And I'm not going to go into detail on all of it, but... Anyway, I next time I can I find out in next door, I see her with bags, her stuff in bags under a tree, and she's homeless. And um, I was thinking, Lord, what happened? You know, how did she end up here? So I texted her and I said, you know, what's going on? Why are you living, you know, living outside with your daughter? And she told me she ended up in, she got sick and ended up in the hospital and she had um, cellulitis and her feet, she couldn't walk on her feet. It was just horrible. You know, this woman, my heart just went out to her because I know this woman's heart and she was getting, you know, scathing comments from people calling her scammer and all this kind of thing. But they didn't take the time to look in her eyes. They didn't take the time to sit across from her and listen to her story. And, and you know, you can tell a lot by somebody by looking in their eyes and really listening, right? You know, God will reveal their heart to you. And this woman has a big heart. 
So I asked her, I said, did you go to church? And she didn't. She had a time to go to church. Now, what would have happened if she would have gone to church? I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? That was obviously a path God gave her, a a lit path. Go here. What lit path has he been putting in front of you? I want to ask you that. Because it's on those paths, it's on that lit path that God is placing in your life. It's those doors he's opening up. That's where you're going to find the, the abundance. It's inside of you, but he is guiding you and directing you, okay? Some of you may be anxious because you can't pay the bills. Are you, are you paying attention to what God is telling, where God's telling you to go? Ask yourself that. That is the abundance. He promises provisions. He prom- He tells you, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything, with prayer and thanksgiving, bring it all to the Father. Tell him, I'm thankful for all that I have, but I'm very anxious about this thing. Tell him. And he will calm you. He, that this is a, you have a source of peace. That's your abundance. You have a source of joy. That's your abundance. When you're going through a a difficult time and you're like, I just can't take any more of this, Lord. You have a source of long suffering. That's your abundance. So I don't know, you know, this one we got, we did get her off the street for a couple of nights and, um, and I've prayed over her. And I haven't heard anything. And, you know, I'm open to the Father, you know, that if he wants me to do anything more, that he will let me know. You know, and he does. He does let me know. Trust me. He's put her in my, he puts her, he brings her into my view, you know, so, and then in my heart. And so, as we close in prayer, I'd like to pray for her too. And I pray that she has found a church or, you know, that she, I, I know churches where she's going to, she's going to find that, uh, um, that blessing that God has for her. I know that so there is a blessing waiting there for her. I know it in my heart. And because three people have told her that, and I think it's intimidating, but don't let anything intimidate you from going where God tells you to go. If I can encourage you on that, don't let, do not be intimidated by any path God has set before you. Don't be intimidated. Go. Don't be fearful. Go. Because there is going to be a blessing there. Okay. Let's close in prayer. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. And if you enjoyed it, share it, like it, pass it around so it can help somebody else. Um, we really, really appreciate your support. And in fact, the more... You know, the way I hate, let me just say right here, I really don't like social media. I don't like how you have to say, you know, like, share, you know, blah, 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 blah. If God puts it on your heart to like it, like it. If God doesn't, don't, you know, I'm, I'm all for God's will on this. But, you know, the way the algorithm works is that you get, they, they, they suppress you if you don't have you know, if you don't have the likes, if you don't have the shares, if they see that your podcast, at at least this is the way I'm understanding it. So if you want us to appear before more people, then the more people have to like it and share it and that kind of a thing. So let's, let's enough of that. Let's pray. And, um, I'm going to pray for all of you out there that, that have slipped into the worldly view of the abundance. And I pray Lord that I pray that God brings you into his um, abundance and his and the understanding of what his abundance is and that so that you can experience it. Because let me tell you, it's much more valuable than the world's abundance, much more valuable in your walk with the Lord. Father God, I thank you so much. I thank you for the audience that you brought today, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that they hear the truth and understand the truth of your word. And Lord Jesus, I pray for 
this woman that you've put on my heart and um I've been following her her story. I pray that you um don't let it end in destruction. Lift her up, Lord. Lift her up, Lord. Impress on her heart. Draw her to you. Give her the courage to walk into that church that you have for her. Help her to find a um, a spiritual her spiritual family that will surround her and help her in her time of need. And Father, I love you, and I thank you for all that you've impressed on my heart today. And um, I pray for all those listening that they will walk in your abundance, Lord. Walk in your abundance. I pray that there's a path you put in their in their way that they take it and don't let the enemy speak intimidation or fear into them. We ask it all through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Now we will see you next week. I'm trying to do the Tuesday thing every Tuesday. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. So, Lord willing, we'll have another podcast. Don't know what that one's going to be about yet. But but he'll give it to me. I trust that he's going to give it to me. All right. Love you guys. See you next time.